Welcome back to the channel everybody. On today's video, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about political terms and how they are often misunderstood. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, sorry I haven't been making content the last few days, uh, but I'm just uh, recovering from a snow blizzard that uh, had us without electricity and um, for the last week, and then I also have a sinus infection, which is uh, giving me some difficulty with my hearing, but we'll be back to music content soon. But uh, in the meantime, I thought I would continue with my politics blog. And today I want to talk about political terms, because um, I don't think we heeded George Orwell's warnings that he wrote about in 1984. So one of the concepts that George Orwell brought forward in 1984 was a concept he called Newspeak. And what Newspeak was, was an attempt by the authoritarian government to reduce the vocabulary of the language in order that um, it be harder to engage in rhetoric, meaning um, the less words you have to use, the less you can in detail describe your thought patterns. So um, a good example of that would be like using BB instead of the word baby. But um, if we look at that a little deeper, I, I also want to think about um, political terms, the way we use them, especially here in America. So one of the things that really bothers me is uh, people always like to say that liberal and conservative are opposite, and that's kind of the main rhetoric. I mean, if you look on YouTube, it's always liberals versus conservatives. But really, are those opposing views? I mean, is that is, is the opposite of, of conservative liberal? And what do these words really mean? Well, a lot of people, um, you know, they don't think to, to actually think about words and, and, and um, what their origins are and how they've been used in history. So, um, for example, I think the opposite of conservative, which means keeping the status quo, right? Or let's look it up. Let's ask Google. Definition of conservative. Here's the definition of conservative, averse to change or innovation and holding traditional value. All right. So averse to change, holding traditional value. So that means they're fighting for the status quo. A conservative fights for the status quo. If you're fighting for the status quo and you're in America in 2021, does that mean you want to repeal Roe versus Wade? If you were conservative, you would keep the status quo, correct? So the status quo in this country is Roe versus Wade is the law of the land. Therefore, by definition, most people who consider themselves conservative but are anti Roe versus Wade aren't actually conservative. So do we have a word to describe somebody who wants a change in the current policy? Well, let's see. Let's look. If we look at history books from the past, they did have a word for this. And let's look. Let's ask Google right quick. What is the definition of reactionary? Here's the definition of reactionary of a person or a set of views opposing political or social liberalization or reform. So somebody who is opposed to liberalization is a reactionary, correct? All right, well, we've talked about conservative a little bit. Let's talk about liberal. What does liberal mean? What is the definition of liberal? Here's the definition of liberal. Willing to respect or accept behavior or opinions different from one's own. Open to new ideas. So if you accept the behaviors of others, you are liberal. Uh, and you accept people that have opinions other than your own. Really, most Americans should be liberal, as, as that's kind of one of the base foundations that our country was uh, made on, Correct. Now, I think the opposite of conservative is progressive. Now, let's see what the definition of progressive is. 
What is the definition of progressive? Here's the definition of progressive, happening or developing gradually or in stages, proceeding step by step. All right, so now we understand what progressive is. Progressive is progressively moving forward. Conservative is keeping the status quo. Reactionary is against the status quo, correct? All right, now we're getting it. So what's another word that describes somebody who is progressive and it has been used in uh, political science? Well, that word is reformist. So let's, let's ask the Google what the definition of reformist is. Okay, Google, what's the definition of reformist? Here's the definition of reformist. Supporting or advancing gradual reform rather than abolition or revolution. All right, so the difference between a reformist and a progressive is slight. So a reformist wants to reform the current system. A progressive wants to continue to move forward. A conservative wants to keep the status quo. And a reactionary is against other people's ideas, right? That's by the dictionary. We all have a phone. We can all look these words up. So that leaves radicals. What is a radical? Let's ask Google. What is a radical? Here's the definition of radical, especially of change or action, relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something, far-reaching or thorough. So a radical is not for incremental change. A radical is for exceptional change or a, a, a significantly changing the current system. So in America, if you're a socialist, you're a radical because we are currently in a free market system. Now, I am in the center, mostly. Um, I'm a social democrat, which I believe in democracy with social programs, which sometimes these words are also mixed up. Because to me, democrat is the noun and social is the word is the adverb, I'm sorry, adjective. So if you think about social democrat, that means a democrat, demo meaning people, krat meaning rule by, so somebody who believes in rule by the people, and social meaning social programs or programs that help the society. So as a social democrat, which I consider Franklin Delano Roosevelt all the way up to Jimmy Carter, I consider them all social democrats, even Eisenhower, because Eisenhower used government money to extend the internet, interstate highway system, correct? And even Nixon started the Enviro, Environmental Protection Agency. So therefore, they were social democrats. Once Reagan got into power, things began to change. And we have another word I would like you guys to understand, Neoliberalism. Let's look it up. What is the definition of neoliberalism? Here's the definition of neoliberalism, a political approach that favors free market capitalism, deregulation, and reduction in government spending. All right. So that is actually what most Republicans are. They believe in cutting government spending and free markets. Neoliberalism. So what is neoconservatism? Let's ask Google. What is the definition of neoconservative? Here's the definition of neoconservative relating to or denoting a return to a modified form of a traditional viewpoint in particular a political ideology characterized by an emphasis on free market capitalism and an interventionist foreign policy. Interventionist foreign policy. That means, in my eyes, putting, spreading democracy throughout the world, spreading democracy throughout the world. But what has really occurred from that? Really, it's, it's letting our corporations and 
protecting their interests all over the world. So that's the difference between neoliberal and neoconservative. Now, if you think about it, you can actually be both, except you're not really reducing government spending if you're a neoconservative. You're increasing government spending to uh, extend your influences to foreign nations. So one last word I want us to look at is uh, one that I've been called quite a bit, and, and I actually in my youth I probably was one. And um, in fact, the, one of my old bands is called Free Radicals. Let's look up the word radical. What is the definition of the word radical? Here's the definition of radical, especially of change or action, relating to or affecting the fundamental nature of something, far-reaching or thorough. So, a radical is for a complete change of the current system. Now, let's think about this. There are some people on the far right that would prefer prayer in school, Ten Commandments in all government buildings, right? But our government talks about separation of church and state. So therefore, if you are for those theocratic type ideals, you're not a conservative. You are a radical. If you're wanting to get rid of free market capitalism, you're a radical. Is that understood? Now, an aside, I want to talk about my politics. I don't want to get rid of free market capitalism. But I also understand that there are innate problems with capitalism that we need to keep a close eye out for. Capitalism works best, in my opinion, when there is fair competition. And uh, some industries, unfortunately, there is a barrier to entry that is almost insurmountable. And those industries will eventually turn into monopolies. And once we have monopolies, we have com corporate control and, and we lose the competition aspect that capitalism brings us. Therefore, I think it is the job of the government, especially since we've let our corporations get so big, I think it's the job of the government to rein in the power, regulate them, to make sure they're not poisoning us or, or, or ripping us off. We need to make sure that there is fair competition and that there are no monopolies. And we've seen in history what happens when capitalism goes unregulated. They're called gilded ages. I personally think we are in a third gilded age, if you read American history. And uh, every time there has been these gilded ages, there's always been a reaction and a call for more social equality. So remember, um, it kind of annoys me sometimes, when, uh, especially when they say liberal and conservative. See, I think it's progressive and conservative. Reformist, reactionary. So the opposite of conservative is progressive. Further right, Further right, we have reactionaries. Further left, we have reformists. On both extremes, we have radicals. So I would like everyone to think about these terms. Remember Orwell. And all you people that keep calling yourself conservatives, I would challenge that. I think a lot of you are actually reactionaries, and I think some of you are radicals because you want significant changes. That is the libertarian wing or the, what I call anarcho-capitalists. Well, thank you very much. Um, that does it for this video, but I will, uh, on my next politics video, continue looking at the definitions of words and uh, how we misuse them 
quite often in American politics. So oh, please like and subscribe. Uh, please, I'd love to hear some comments below. And uh, let me know what you think. All right, we'll talk to you soon. This is The Blind Bassist. Peace out.